Good morning, everybody. I am Captain S. S. Panesar, former Director of Flight Safety and Director of Training from Indian Airlines. I was also on deputation to the Director General of Civil Aviation, a regulatory body of India, as a senior flight inspector for about two and a half years. Today, we are going to discuss about a sad incident that took place at Calicut Airport. A Boeing 737 of Air India Express was operating a flight from Dubai to Calicut. When he was coming over the Calicut, the weather was getting bad. It was raining, low clouds, visibility was also deteriorating. However, the pilot must have thought the visibility within the limits. He carried out an instrument approach to land at Calicut Airport. <laughs> In his first approach, he could not make uh, landing. He has to carry out a missed approach. He carried out a go-around to make a second attempt to land at the airport. During the second approach, as I see on the graph, he landed. The runway was waterlogged. There was a lot of water on the runway. When the water is on the runway, when you touch down smoothly, the, air, the water film, with the water film, the braking becomes very weak. You can't apply full brakes and all that. But he must have used the full reversers also. However, the investigation will tell us where he touched on after landing, when he touched on the beginning or half the runway. And he, somehow he could not stop the aircraft within the runway length. And after the end of the runway, he went into a ditch where the aircraft was broken into three parts. Cockpit was very severely damaged. And I believe both the pilots died instantaneously after this crash. More than, uh, about 170 passengers have been saved. About 18 people lost their lives. Very sad. Our sympathies toward the bereaved families. Now, going through this sad incident, the government has appointed some experts to go even the preliminary inquiry on the site immediately. They have found out the digital flight data recorder, which will tell the position of the engines, their power setting, throttle speed, touchdown speed, what, with what gravity he landed and all that. Everything will be told. And the cockpit voice recorder has also been retrieved, which will also tell us okay, what they were talking during the last 55 minutes till touchdown or going around, everything will be analyzed. And I'm, I'm sure the inquiry will come out with all the facts. But one question will remain unanswered. That after, during the second approach, when he knew the weather is deteriorating very bad, why he did not like to divert to Trivandrum or Cochin or Bangalore, which are very close airports, not very far off. I don't know what are the constraints. Since the pilots are dead, we cannot, this question will remain unanswered. Rest we can find out everything. But a few questions still remain. What are the air traffic control? Did they advise him not to land? Because weather deteriorating? On the runway, the water log? So many questions and will the, in the inquiry will come up. I have earlier also said that DGCA does not have any competent people to investigate such serious incidents and accidents. In the past also they have just done, and here also they will do a cover-up operation to satisfy the, their political bosses. I have also suggested a number of times, even now I recommend to the Honorable Minister to call for a judicial inquiry. The inquiry, difference between the DGCA inquiry and judicial inquiry is simple. In DGC, they don't uh, take any advice from veterans, professionals, pilots, engineers, or anybody. They imagine themselves and depending on whatever they, they have uh, material, they'll give a report. Whereas judicial inquiry, the judge invites the opinion of every professional. In your opinion, what could be done? The idea of all these inquiries, as per the International Civilization Organization Directive, to all the airlines in the world, the inquiry should be done for the purpose to find out the exact cause of incident or accident. 
so as to avoid such recurrence in future. But it should not be done for any punitive purpose to punish a pilot. That should be the motto of our investigation of inquiry. But since DGCA does not have any competence, I have heard the statement of uh, our Director General of Civilization, which is a, just a layman's statement. First of all, I was shocked to know why he is giving his own judgments and all that without getting the preliminary investigation report. Accident has just happened few hours ago and he has already started giving judgments. Because these bureaucrats who are handling these sensitive departments, they have no experience. They have no knowledge of aviation. Nor they have good advisors in the department to advise them what to say and all that. That is a shocking part in our aviation. However, to improve our aviation, it is high time the Honorable Minister should call for a judicial inquiry, call for the veterans, they take their advice, and try to implement the recommendation. And after this inquiry, good report, fair report, we can come out with a recommendation and tell all the airline, all the pilots, what should be done in such serious incidents and cases like this, so as to avoid and take care of the safety of passenger and aircraft in our country. But I do not know what is in the mind of the government. We can only suggest to them. In the past, the inquiries were ordered by the uh, retired judges or serving judges and all that. They did bring out the proper inquiry and implementation were done immediately. In DGC, it will take years to come out with the inquiry report. I have, been, I have cases with me where I find the one case happened two years ago, the inquiry is still continuing. Investigation is continuing. No report has come. But Director General Sivisha suspended the license of pilot for three years. Can you punish a pilot without knowing what is the cause? Unfortunately, pilots in this case are not living. I am sure if they would have been living, the DGC would have stayed and suspended their life for five years without knowing what is the cause, without even hearing them. This is the status of our regulatory body, the so-called the saviour of safety in India. We had a lot of protests. They separated the investigation board. No, the pre they se present separate board, Aircraft Accident Investigation Board is headed by a serving group captain of Indian Air Force. We are glad he's a very experienced pilot himself, very knowledgeable, very honest, very fair. But I want to know what team he has got it. The team he has to take it from DGC. This is the sad part. Now, you see, there are so many questions will arise in this thing. Why didn't the ATC inform the pilots about the de deteriorating weather? Why didn't he suggest them weather around the alternate airport is very good, you can divert there? He can suggest, he cannot order. The final decision lies with the pilot. He cannot force a pilot to divert. It is a, that is why I say that question will remain unanswered throughout. Why didn't the pilot like to divert? Rest everything, we'll find it out. What is it? Some people are giving statements without any application of mind that the pilot wanted to dump the fuel. There's no fuel, procedure to dump the fuel. Somebody said he shut the engines before uh, crashing. No. The fuel levers were in all throttles were fully forward. I've seen the pictures of the cockpit after the crash. Now, all these things will be investigated if a proper investigation is carried out. I'll tell you in the past, government appointed committees, they have come out with the decision that in DGC, they are the jury and they are the judges. They investigate, they make a report, they punish a pilot, they relieve a pilot, whatever they like it, depending on the mood of the politician. And we have been insisting that bureaucrats Howsoever intelligent they may be, but in aviation, you have to have a bureaucrat who has an aviation background. He must understand the aviation thoroughly before he takes over the regulatory body, which makes rules, regulation, investigation, so many things, examinations they conduct and all that. In the past, many 
fake license were also issued. When uh, we were there in the DGC and inspector, we found out in the training section, people are incompetent who are giving licenses. They have no clue. They just calculated the total in the logbook where pilot has done the required number of flying for the license or not. He doesn't know whether Delhi Lucknow takes one or two hours or eight hours. He's only bothered for that. that is where the fake license were issued. But when we intervened, we inspected each and everything there. And we had A. Marshall Keeler, who was the head of the, he was the aviation advisor. He used to, whenever we do a check of a uh, particular flight, he used to call for our explanation. What is our observation about the airports, navigational aids, cabin crew, pilots, engineer, technical, so many things we have to check. It is not only the check of the pilot, but so many observations. If according to the DGCA, his inspectors have been checking this runway for the rubber and all that, maybe they have given reports and all that. We have to see when did they go and observe, what was the action taken by the airport authority after that. Did they warn them? This airport is long runway, 9,000 feet. Everybody is talking tabletop, tabletop. What do you mean by tabletop? Runway is 9,000 feet. When Jumbo can land, what is there? There's no worry. Only thing is, in this particular case, pilot could not stop the aircraft on the runway within limitation and he went off the runway. And I'm sure it is because the echo planning, we call it, the, the aircraft slipped on the water layer and the brakes were ineffective. Bra brakes become ineffective, anti-skid unit become ineffective. Unless you hit the ground properly and the wheels start rotating, you will not get the anti-skid effect also. Those things, of course, the inquiry, we will come it out. But I want some professional to become an honorable minister should order an open inquiry for the safety of aviation in India in future. This incident has happened, so we can't retrieve those uh, pilots and all that. Another sad thing which saddened me most in this incident was these pilots Captain Sate was ex Air Force pilot, highly decorated pilot, fighter pilot. He was decorated by Air India also. He was a Czech pilot instructor. The co pilot was experienced. I just saw the news the dead body of a co pilot was brought to Delhi. Indigo Airline, their managers, they must be knowing this pilot, they arranged the reception of the dead body at Delhi, they arranged a separate bay for the aircraft. They sent more than 100 pilots to receive the dead body. They placed their wreaths and all that. They arranged the body to be taken to Matra, where his parents were living, his wife was there. But unfortunately, nobody from Air India came, even the CMD. Didn't bother to come and at least if he could not come do some preoccupation, which I don't know. Which he could not have cancelled. He should have come personally at least place the wreath on the dead body. We have directors there cheaper by dozen. Not a single director came to receive the dead body. Is it not a matter of shame? That boy is given, he is dead and gone. No, at least let us give the last respects which we can do. That's all we can do. We can do nothing for the family. We can't revive the dead people. Well, at least let us give our respect and recognize the service they have done to our airline. That inquiry will tell any, but we are so selfish today. The CMD, but because he's a bureaucrat, he's not concerned. He's only concerned for his extra five years or plumb posting. Even the directors, many directors sitting in the office doing nothing, watching TV and enjoying the evenings and all that. They had no courtesy to come at the airport. It's a matter of shame. Even look at this. Our Honorable Prime Minister immediately sent condolences. How nice of him. Great of him. We appreciate that. Many ministers sent their Governor of Kerala came there at the site. Honorable Minister of Civilization went to the site. See, this is the situation of our airline. Even the MD did not care to come to the airport. The directors, cheaper by dozens, they didn't like to come to the airport. Why? They're sitting in the office, they have no respect for the dead bodies. 
those boys have served this airline. It's a really matter of great shame. Look at this. Our Honorable Prime Minister immediately sent condolences. How great of him. How much confidence it must have given to the family that government has recognized the services of these boys who died. Our Home Minister, other ministers, they all sent. Governor of Kerala was at this site. He went to the site. Local minister, they all went. Our Honorable Minister Civilization also went on the site. But I only wish if our Honorable Minister uses his office for the judicial inquiry. I do not want him to resign like other. In the past, ministers have taken responsibility. Let me tell you that. Our Honorable Prime Minister Lal Bada Shastri, a railway incident took place in near Ambala. Two, more than 200 people died. Honorable Mr. Lalva, he took personal responsibility and he resigned as a Minister of, Civil, a Minister of Railways. Mother of Sindhya, our airline pilots were on a strike for three months. Executives of flight, they hired some aircraft with the Wetley, with their pilots from Kajkistan. Their TU 154 was flying and it crashed at Delhi at midnight. I was a senior flight inspector. We went to the site. Our Director General Shiva Raman, bureaucrat and a pilot himself, firebrand DG. He was also at the site immediately at midnight. Our Honorable Minister, late Sri Mother of Sindhya, came at the airport. When I was introduced by the Director General, so Honorable Minister wanted to speak to me. He said, Captain Panesha, tell me the, according to you as a pilot, what is the real cause for this accident? I said, sir, these uh, aircraft we had taken on a wet lead, these pilots have not been briefed properly by the airline about duty time limitation. He is flying in the morning, Delhi, Bombay, Delhi, Delhi, Bangalore, Delhi, Delhi, Hyderabad, Delhi. He is coming to Hyderabad after 11 hours of flying. He was a tired pilot. He is not a machine. He called the director general city. He says, I have got this news from Captain B. He says, he is right, sir. You know, when I got up in the morning, I heard on the radio, Honorable Mr. Madhur of Sindhya has resigned as a Minister of Civil Service, taking the responsibility for this crash. I do not want our present Honorable Minister to resign, but at least show your competence for a judicial inquiry. Let's find out the truth of the accident so that we have involved more safety measures in future. We guide our junior pilots, senior pilots, in, and send the recommendation to the training center. Please advise them when to divert, when not to divert. Also, it will give advisory services to the air traffic control. So many agencies, we can guide them. But this cover-up operation by DGCA will not bring any results of fruit for safety of aviation in future. My humble submission, once again, let's have an open inquiry. Take the advice of veterans, seniors, many instructors, examiners, DGCA people, retired air traffic controllers. Let them all come and give their opinion. We can improve the aviation. I'll tell you the DGCA's Lexadile approach. They constructed a control tower in Bombay, ignoring all the guidelines of ICAO. Our uh, uh, general sector, president of Indian Commercial Pirates, when he came to, he raised objection. Okay, this tower is so close to the runway, how can you make it? When they realize they fought, they say, okay, now what we'll do is we will not use this runway 1432 if the visibility is below 5 kilometers and the cloud base is less than 1,000 feet. Now, recently they constructed one long runway in Delhi, 1129, more than, I think, 12,000 feet, 12, 13,000 feet. And our runway is the longest runway in Southeast Asia. But they were not using more than uh, just 60% uh, of runway they were used. When I asked under RTI, what is the reason why it is not being used fully? They say because of Shiv Murthy on the way. So I asked a question, was Shiv Murthy there before the construction of runway or after the construction of runway? They said, no, it was before the I said, then why the runway direction was not changed? Today, out of this 12,500 feet runway, we are only using approximately 6,000. Pilots have to use hard braking. In a wet runway, you can imagine. I don't wish that. It can happen like a Calicut incident. This is the approach of our DGCA and the government. 
They have spent public money in this runway, huge runway, longest runway in Southeast Asia, but only using just 60 percent of the runway. This is the way our aviation is taking action as per DGC and airport authority. Runways are made with a wide experience of wind and all the wind direction for the last so many years, and then they say which direction they have to make a runway. You know, the Spinal Injuries Institute of Mansant Kun, they raised the objection when the aircraft is landing in the westerly direction, we get our windows and all the shutters and all our patients get shocked. DG said, airport authority could not advise a procedure where they can avoid that uh, approach from the Spinal Injury Institute. Like in Hong Kong and all that, they have uh, hills all around the runway, but they have different procedures they avoid it. Here we could not do that also. Why they could not uh, devise a procedure where uh, after take I immediately turn right at so many 200 feet, turn right and all that? No. Nobody has taken any pains to that. All these questions remain, you see, because the incompetent director generals of civilization who are bureaucrats, no knowledge of aviation. Our former Navy chief has commented very badly about the bureaucrats of today. He said they only work to please their political masters to get five years extra or some plum posting. Even he has commented, it is high time the cabinet secretary should stand up to the political master and tell him, enough damage has been done to Air India. Let's hire some professionals. Beautiful statement he gave it. But we don't learn lesson from such senior people. Well, in the end only I say, I hope the inquiry is done properly, open inquiry by taking advice from all corners and our Honorable Minister will be kind enough to involve or order a judicial inquiry for the proper investigation and then monitor the implementation of such inquiry and it should be time-bound inquiry. It should not take two years or three years like DGC doing it. I can quote those incidents. And some sense to prevail in Air India officials. Please, have some respect for the dead people who are gone. They have served your airline. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. God bless our country. Thank you.